Can we pray? Father God, we come before you this morning, lifting our hearts up to you, asking for your guidance, your direction. Lord, we know you love us. You care for us. And Lord, we just want to thank you. And Lord, I ask that you will send the Holy Spirit here today that the words I say will not be mine, but they will be yours from your word. We thank you and praise you. And be with those that could not be here today. Lift them up, Father. Touch their hearts. We pray for Phyllis and Nielsen. Lord, I know what he's going through. Just give him comfort. Be with us now. Bless each one. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, You may be seated. This time I want to share a little more about Puerto Rico. And it's uh, brief. When we got there, we saw fertile land. Nine months ago, it was desolate land. I couldn't but uh, think of that song we just finished, A Storm and our anchor holding, and their anchor holding. And uh, last Sabbath, we were worshiping with our brothers and sisters in Umacao, number one. There's two churches there. Umacao um, was very interesting. It's in the, in the, city about um, five miles from where my son is living and I have to say it was probably a little bigger than this church probably about a hundred people were there approximately Um, but a very vibrant church praise the Lord you know after a storm (laughs) You, uh, you think that people start leaving, you know. I don't, I don't know. I didn't see the congregation before. But uh, I found the group participating from a 14-year-old that led the worship song for, uh, to uh, children participating of uh, uh, a six-year-old boy, and uh, there was about in the front when the speaker was telling his uh, his story to the children. There must have been about eleven boys and girls, from five to probably about ten or so. And uh, I want to tell you, our brothers. By going by gauging by that church that uh, is, I say vibrant because later on I found out that they spawn nine other churches. Um, and uh, oh man, uh, that is, you know, that is, is great. And so I found out that this little church, at one time it was 300 members, um, and they spawn out and uh, start another church in other churches. Uh, they were givers. And I say that, you know, not, you know, to, 
Sometimes we, we think because we come into crisis, we, you know, we don't give. We hold back. But they were givers. The first thing that I saw was in the Sabbath school, they were givers of encouragement. Um, they wanted to they put a name up there, let's pray for that person. <laughs> and I thought, oh, wow. The, their pastor was sick, but these are, you know, the, the people at the church. They were givers. Then they said, hey, this month, in the middle of the month, we're having evangelism for about a week with amazing facts. Come, we have 5,000 invitations. <laughs> so I got an invitation. And uh, they were very positive. After nine months, they stayed positive. They had a lot of hope. And uh, material things. Uh, the speaker was a physician, dynamic storyteller. And he spoke. And uh, when I greeted him at the door, he says, to one of the elders uh, about my age, probably younger, a teacher, mathematics teacher, he says, take them upstairs and you, we want to feed them. <laughs> so they were uh, there. I got to know a little more about this, the speaker. He's, I says, how, how did you do in the storm? He said, my new house was destroyed. And I, he says, but, you know, things go down, things go up. Crops are <laughs> level, but they grow. So uh, I, was, I, was, I was amazed. Um, of course, you know, uh, some, people, uh, some people had um, on one of the, the, the elders, that invited us to eat, said uh, something. He says, my daughter was without electricity for seven months. How many of us, when the crisis comes, <laughs> could we have hope? But these people were all full of hope. A lot of smiles, a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, uh, praising the Lord. And uh, even uh, uh, one of the ladies there, uh, she led the service before the, the speaker came up, and she was, she was, you know, up in her years. Um, but I did today, today, you know, we have much to be thankful for. God is a giver of good gifts. And I saw that all through Puerto Rico. He's a giver of all good gifts. Uh, we have an opportunity to uh, bring um, our offerings. The offerings are for the local church budget and our tithes. And uh, we, um, we, I want to thank you for ge your generosity. You are a generous congregation. And so at this time, I want to ask the uh, deacons to, to wait upon us as uh, we will pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we praise you. For in this, these difficult times in which we live, not only in Puerto Rico, but around the world, and even in our communities, difficult times. But we praise you that uh, your son's coming is for sure. And we pray that uh, you would bless these, these uh, tithes, these offerings. May they be used to um, communicate the gospel to others. And to uh, and as we um, do that, we pray that uh, 
you will uh, have much success. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time also, I remind you that after the offering, our, uh, are picked up, we have three, three children that are being supported uh, in their um, homes. They're there in Central America. They have their sponsor orphanages. Um, and they are certainly, um, certainly need our, our uh, offering. So if you could pass the uh, offering baskets to the middle and they will be collected um, during the children's story. is not here? Okay. Um, do we have a volunteer to tell a children's story? Oh, come, brother. Bob. Children, stay here. Kids, I'm not exactly a professional at this, but did you know that a lot of people think that animals are kind of stupid, but they really aren't. God created some really smart animals. Picture this. The four of you are at Grandma and Grandpa's house, and they are at a big farm, and there's a little creek that runs through the farm, and you decide to take a walk by that little creek. 
So you're down there by the little creek, and all of a sudden you see something you really didn't want to see. Can you guess? A skunk. <laughs> well, you kept your distance, but that skunk really wasn't paying attention to you. He was walking down the path, and every time he saw a little piece of straw, he picked it up in his mouth. And pretty soon there was straw coming out of the left side of his mouth, and there was straw coming out of his right side of the mouth. And the kids, what, what's that skunk doing? I've never saw a skunk do something like that. But he kept walking down, and then he turned his back to the creek, and he started to back up into the creek very, very slowly. Pretty soon, the only thing you could see of that skunk was the tip of his nose in the straw. Then the skunk let go of the straw, and it was pitch black. And the skunk ran out of the river and went down the path. Well, you guys are pretty curious. What made that straw turn pitch black? So you ran after it. And you got, in the cre you got into the creek, and you saw what the straw... You know what the straw was covered with? Can you guess? Fleas. Flea. Skunks don't like fleas any more than we like fleas. They bite and they itch. But the straw was covered with fleas. So what happened was that when the skunk went very slowly into the water, the fleas started jumping up to where they could stay dry. Finally, the only place they had to go was the straw. Now, that was pretty clever of that skunk, wasn't it? That's the one, probably the only way that skunk had to get rid of those fleas. And he figured it out because God gave him a good brain. Now, aren't you glad that God gave you guys good brains too? Yeah, me too. this time, I invite you to turn to our scripture reading, which is found in John, the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verse 15 through 21. John, chapter 6, verse 15 through 21. My Bible says, Jesus walks on the sea. Verse 15, therefore, when Jesus perceived that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he departed again to the mountain by himself alone. Now, when evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into the boat and went over the sea toward Capernaum. And it was already dark, and Jesus had not come to them. Then the sea arose because a great wind was blowing. So when they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and drawing near to the boat, and they were afraid. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. They, and then they willingly received him into the boat, and immediately the boat was at the land where they were going. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. At this time, Larry, you have the time. Good morning. Um, a few weeks ago when Carol had the song, Will Your Anchor Hold, I thought of my husband. I brought a picture of a lighthouse. 
that was given to me by my granddaughter. And a lot of you know that Rusty at one time was a fisherman. He fished the Oregon coast and some of Washington. And Dallas also fished with him. But there is a lighthouse on the coast. There's several of them. And you really look at them, they're beautiful. In Psalms 107, 23 to 29, I want to read that. If you want to turn to it. Those who go down to the sea in ships, who do business on great waters, they have seen the works of the Lord. And they wondered, and he wonders in the deep. So he spake and raised up a stormy wind, which lifted up the waves of the sea. They rose up in the heavens, and they went down in the depths. Their soul melted away in their misery. He reeled and staggered like a drunken man and were in their wits' ends. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he brought them out of their distresses. He caused the storm to be still so that the waves of the seas was hushed. There is a song called The Lighthouse. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm not going to sing it to you, but I'm going to read it to you. There is a lighthouse on the hillside that overlooks the sea. And when I'm tossed, it sends out a light that I might see. And the light that shines in the darkness now will safely lead us over. And if it wasn't for the lighthouse, my ship, your ship, would be no more. And I thank God for the lighthouse. I owe my life to him, for Jesus is that lighthouse. And from the rocks of the sin he has shown a light around me that I could clearly see. And if it weren't for the lighthouse, where would that ship be? And everybody that lives about us says, tear the lighthouses down. And the big ships don't sail this way anymore. There's no use for them standing around. Then my mind goes back to the stormy night when just in time I saw the light. Yes, the light from the old lighthouse that stands up there on the hill. And I thank God for the lighthouse. And we all owe our lives to him, for Jesus is the lighthouse. And if it weren't for the lighthouse, where would we be? Does your anchor hold? It needs to, because that anchor is Jesus. He's the only one that can save you. There's a lot of scriptures in the in the Bible that refer to Jesus. I can find my papers here. Let Jesus take charge of the helm in the time of storm. You know, we all have storms. I had a storm this week. Not with the wind or the rain. Wednesday was Rusty's 80th birthday. And it was hard. Not to say I love you. 
many know he's waiting for Jesus to come? And I know he wants to see every one of you there. Each one, because he loves you. Not as much as the Lord loves you, but he does love you. Sorry. God takes care of us when we are mouth, when we aren't, when we don't deserve it. And he's always there. Reach out and ask him to take you by the hand. We had a friend, Verna Martin. And I've probably told you this before. Whenever she got in her car, she always asked God to put their put his arms around her. For what? For safety. And to know that he loves her. So don't take him for granted. He's always there. Isaiah 25, 4 says, For thou hast been a defense for the helpless, a defense for the needy of his distress, a refuge from a storm, a shade from the heat, and from the deaths of the rest, ruthless, is like a rainstorm against a wall. But you know, the other day we had a little bit of rain. When I got up, my porch was wet. Then the sun came kind of out and it dissipated. And then I got busy and I looked out again and the porch was wet again. And that was on, that was on Wednesday. So God took that fear or that distress away, knowing that He's coming soon to take us all home. You know, the Lord tells us to be a witness to others. We regularly need to claim Acts 26, 18. And I'm going to read it. To open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the dominion of Satan to God in order that they may receive forgiveness of sins and the inheritance of those who have been sanctified by faith in me, in Jesus' means. And we may pray for the Holy Spirit to urge conviction and repentance. I got my, I got my Bible all marked here with, so I don't mess up. John 6:44 No one can come to me unless the Father has sent me to draw him and I will rise him up in the last day. He will. John 16 7 and 8 But I tell you the truth it is your advantage that I go away for if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Who is that helper? The Holy Spirit. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning the sin of righteousness and judgment. We need to pray for God to open the eyes and ears not just ours, but other people's ears and eyes. Isaiah 42. Oops, just a minute. And I lost the ticket. Isaiah 42.7. But I'm going to read verse 6 first. I am the Lord, and I call you in righteousness. I will also hold you by the hand and watch over you. And I will appoint you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the nations, to open the blind eyes, to bring out 
prisoners from the dungeons and those who dwell in darkness from prison. I am the Lord, that is my name, and I will not give my glory to another, nor my praise to graven images. Isaiah 50. You know, I was looking through this the other night, and I thought, wow. <laughs> but you know, the more we read it, what God has in this book, no matter if it's the NIV or the King James or the easy reading, it all comes right down to the same basis, God's love for you, his salvation. So Isaiah 54 and 5. The Lord God has given me the tongue of disciples that I may know how to sustain the mercy the misery, one with one word. He awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear to listen to the disciples. Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not dis disobedient, nor did I turn back. In Matthew 13, he's talking about sowing the seeds, but I'm not going to go through that chapter because I think all of you know it. And when you go home, read chapter 13 of Matthew about the sowing of the seeds. In Corinthians 4, <coughs> 4 and 6, In whose, ca is, whose case the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving? And there's a lot of unbelieving out there. But they might not see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For God said, The light shall shine out of darkness, is the one who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. Yeah, we also need to, with the preparation of their hearts, to receive God's word. And these are things that we can do. And it's a battle for prayer for others. Matthew 13. Matthew 13, 1 and uh, let's see. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry. <coughs> Luke 24, 45. And he opens their minds to understand the scriptures. And that's what we need to do. Our minds need to be open to the Holy Spirit and to the scriptures. Acts 16, 14. There was a lady in Lydia, named Lydia, who was a seller of purple, a worshiper of God, was listening. Her ears were open. And the Lord opened her heart to respond to this thing spoken by Paul. So, we can open our ears. And sometimes we close it because we don't want to hear certain things. I know there's been times when Rusty would say something and I would totally ignore him, <laughs> which wasn't nice. And he'd look at me, did you hear me? Yeah. Well, you didn't respond. Well, I was waiting for the right words to say. <laughs> and we've all been there, right? We've all been there. So we need to pray for divine encounter, and that is when you see somebody in the store or passing somebody in the street or, or somebody comes up to you, 
It's, 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 it's God sent. He wants us to be our witness. In Acts 17, 26 and 27, he made one, every nation a kindred, to live on all the face of the earth, having determined their appointed times and the boundaries of their habitation, that they should seek God, if perhaps they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. And he's not far. You know, he could be sitting right next to you. I know you, each of you got an angel sitting beside you today. You can't see him, but he's there. Either a man or a woman, I don't know which, but, but he's there. He cares for you. He knows your thoughts. He knows your ways. In Isaiah forty-nine twenty-five, God says, Contend with him, and he will contend with you, and he will save your sons and your daughters. Do you believe that? I do. I really believe that. I had a son that was out of the church for a long time. But praise God, he's back in the church, and he's strong. Thank you, Dallas. You know, tears, God gave tears for a reason. You know, if you hold those tears back, what happens? I mean, I don't cry, my head kind of gets kind of foggy. But then I ask him, let the tears fall. Let them fall. Well, because they are yours. Just like Mary Magdalene, she cried. She saved her teardrops, she said. But what did she do with those teardrops? What did she do with them? She washed the Savior's feet. So whenever you feel like you need a teardrop fall, think of Mary Magdalene and think of Jesus. You know, years ago when we were in the old church, we had lots of kids lots of young people. But when the old mountain decided to blow her top, we lost a lot of them because they lost their jobs. But you know, we still have a church here, God's place. It's going to be filled. Do you believe it? There were times when I would get come home from work on the late shift. <laughs> Especially wasn't home. I would get in the car to come over here, and this was before, this was when we still had the rafters and you could see them. He'd be laying up there on a piece of plywood. He wasn't sleeping. He was talking to God. He said, God, I don't know what I'm doing. But you do. You brought us the land. You brought us the help to build a church. To be a lighthouse in the community. And we thank Dennis and, and Mary Ann for their help. For Verna Martin, for Jan Sattelmeyer, for Laverne Pritchard, because she used to get right up on top of that roof, too. And some of our young people did, too. But you know, whenever Rusty asked for something, if he needed 3,000, 5,000, or, or certain people with, that knew what to do, it was there. God answers your prayers. So don't forget that. He answers your prayers. We need to pray for protection for ourselves because the enemy is at work every day. I 
get discouraged, and I know a lot of you do too. But hang on to Jesus. He's the only help. Psalms 91, the prayer of David. I love it. If you want to turn to it. There's just, I'm not going to read it all, because we've all read it before, but he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. And I say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For it is he who delivers you from the snare of the trapper and from the death, deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his opinions. And under his wings you will seek refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a bullet. Fourteen, because he has loved me, therefore I will deliver him. And I will set I will set him securely on high because he has known my name. He will call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. For a long life, I will satisfy him. And let him behold my salvation. We need to be alert. 1 Peter 5, 8. Casting all your anxiety upon him because he cares for you. So be sober in spirit and be alert at all times. Your adversary, the devil, prowls about like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Ephesians 6, 10 to 19. Finally, be strong in the Lord, in the strength of the mighty. Put on the full armor of God, that you may be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For your struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the full armor of God that you may be able to resist that evil day, having done, done everything to stand firm. Stand firm, therefore, having girt your lines with truth and putting on the breastplate of righteousness. Having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In addition to all, take up the shield of faith with which you shall be able to extinguish all the flaming missiles the evil one throws at you. So with all prayer and tradition, pray at all times in the spirit. And with this in view, be on alert for all perseverance and petition for all saints. So I appreciate Wanda for sending out prayer requests. Because we need that. We need to pray for these people. There is so much hurt in this world. There's hurt here in our church. And we have had answers to prayer. I received some answers to, to prayer this morning. And God is good. He doesn't want anybody to hurt. He wants us to be able to jump around like a lamb or, or a baby cat. 
across our street, we used to have a horse farm. And there, once in a while, was a colt that would be out in the pasture, just running and falling and kicking up his heels. You know, we can be that way, too. We can be that way. I have one more thing I want to read, and then I'm going to open up the mic for anybody that has any praise or thanks. If I can find my other page. Hang on. When I met the Master, like a babe when it cries for its mother, like a child I was helpless and alone. Though I met the Master, now I am one of his own. For all things were changed when he found me. A new day break through all around me. For I have met the Master and now belong to him. Like a blind man who walks in darkness, I have longed and I have searched for the light. Then I met the Master. Now I walk no more in the dark. For all the things were changed when he found me, found you. A new day broke through all around me. For when I met the Master, now I belong to him. You all belong to him. So at this time, if there's anybody, that has a praise or a short praise or a thank you, I'd like to hear it. I think everybody likes to hear praises, don't we? Yes. Anybody? Maybe we have one in the back. You know, God God loves to hear these praises. I'm very thankful for my mother. Um, she brought me up in the church, and I was saved because of that. And all my children have been saved into the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And Amen. I'm very, very thankful that she's still with us. Yeah. I praise the Lord for that one. Amen. Amen. And we thank the Lord for Lotus, too, and for Jerry. Some of you in the church knows the struggles I've had with my daughter. Since she was 13 years old, she's had a very bad addiction problem. She's now 48. Actually, yeah, 48. She turned 48 yesterday. Um, after all these struggles that she's had, she is off the drugs and um, has no desire mm -hmm. to have any substance. She's um, turned her life over to Jesus. Amen. And she has a roof over her head this year, and so I won't have to worry about her being out in the weather. So I'm thankful to God for a lot of things. Oh, yes. Thank you. Praise it. That's a good praise. I hear that God watches over our children. He says, if you contend with me, I will contend with you, and I will save your sons and your daughters. No matter if they're little or they're big, as they're old, he'll save them. Anybody else? Norma. Dear Lord, I would, <coughs> I would need to help getting me to church. It uh, was one of those things this morning that just one thing happened right after another. Yeah. And... Uh, I am so blessed that I was finally able to get here. Amen. But please pray for me that the devil will be blocked off and yeah. l leave me alone so I can come to church. Amen. 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 Anyone else? There's one in the back, one over here. I love to hear this because you know it uplifts me. You know, I. It's just like when we go to the jail and, and we witness to these ladies or the men. We leave there feeling fed. And that's the way I feel when we 
we lift up Jesus and praise him. Okay, Rob. I have two things. I have a praise. I want to praise God and thank him for my church family. Because uh, we're a praying group, and I had some issues, as you all know, with the kidney stones here a little while yeah. back, and uh, which was distressing. But I had a, a reasonable time with them, and I know it was because of my praying family, church family. Mm -hmm. Now my prayer request. I have a son who uh, is caught in the world of drugs. He has lived on the street. Uh, gee, 30 years. The last time I saw him, he was uh, up in Arlington area asking for money on the side of the road by Walmart. I went looking for him. I couldn't find him. I think his mother's living on the street with him now also. So if you would pray for them. His name is Christopher. His Christopher. mother's name is Kathy. Okay. Yes. Yes, we will. Anyone? Uh, Jeannie had. Jeannie. Oh, back there. Okay. <laughs> Some of you know um, we have a nephew that's living with us right now, and we've been really praying for him over the years. And um, he has, um, he's open to um, learning more about the Lord. He's been asking a lot of questions. And um, just keep him in your prayers. But we just see that he's just, you know, he spends time with a, a relative that's um, an atheist and that argues with him about God. And last Sabbath, uh, he called him up and said, hey, I want to, I'm going to church. You want to come with? He didn't think that was funny. But um, anyway, please keep him in your prayers as his, as he learns more about Jesus and his love for him. Yes. And he's recently he said, how do I share my faith? Yes. So it's exciting to see the journey that he's, uh, the Lord has him on. Good. We all need that journey, don't we? We all need that. Anyone else? Doug has one. Doug, if you want to come. Uh, if you guys could keep us in prayer. We've got a Monday night uh, Bible study that we've been doing for some months now that started out with just a handful of us and uh, it has grown now to almost between 11 mm -hmm. to 14 people at a time. But the prayer that I'm really requesting, as Karen had said earlier about this church growing, uh, we're doing our best to get the younger crowd as they come to this Bible study uh, to want to get them to continually come, but it seems like Satan always wants to throw a roadblock yep. to keep these kids from continually and constantly coming on Monday so that we can eventually introduce them to here. So if you guys would, please keep us all in prayer for that Monday night study. Thank you. I've been going on Monday night. Gary, I mean, I think it was one of the potlucks, and um, Doug asked me, I wanted to come and I said yes you know I've received a blessing you know it's to study by yourself you don't really get anything out of it you know but if you study with somebody else and get their ideas it it brings you back to where you need to be Bob um, uh, quite expensive uh, overall on my truck and uh, I wasn't so sure I was going to be able to pay my tithe but <laughs> and but everything worked out and so I got my tithe paid thank you 
out, you bring it to him first, and it always seems like God always sees you through. I know there's been time when Rusty and I were mm, just, you know, but we said we need to pay the t- we need to give back to the Lord, and um, and He's blessed, and He'll bless you too. Anyone else? I implore to to the Lord to bless us that we are here for really growing in his love. For our Lord and for all one another to really understand his love for us and the wonderful creation he did. It not only for him, it's really for love responding to the Lord of our Lord. God bless all of you and bless and I need to be blessed. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Daisy. Thank you, Daisy. Anybody else? Anybody else? I would just like to thank everyone for all the prayers that you've given for me. And um, in the last few days, I've had a lot more strength and feel much better. And I hope to keep going on. And thank you. Amen. 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 God is good. You know, my stomach is growling. (laughs) My, you know, um, just recently... um, and I don't see the person here, but uh, I was called out on a phone call. Daisy Mayo is having health issues. Mm. And she will be coming soon, but she has to be anointed. Um, And when, you know, things get into a crisis mode, we want to ask, and you know, the Lord always answers. So have her in your prayers. I want to say um, Carol and I always, it's my habit when we go traveling, we're on the road to ask the Lord for protection. And going to Puerto Rico was no exception. We did. Um, There's always danger, especially when you're on the road. And uh, just before we were heading for the airport, just before we came here, uh, there was somebody moving on the highway. It's uh, the speed limit in Puerto Rico throughout Puerto Rico is 55 because the roads have some damage. And uh, this person was moving at 75 when I was about to move into another lane, and uh, he would have creamed me so bad. And so be, be uh, you know, be always praying. Um, we've had many, many instances that I could see the Lord's hand, you know, when somebody here in Oregon uh, with a big truck decides to make a U-turn on the on the slow lane and I'm moving to the slow lane and I so there is you know the Lord is is there to protect us and uh, he is good and he's looking out for our safety okay one more text Revelation 22 (coughs) excuse me He has shown me a river at the water of life, clear as crystal, coming from the throne and from the Lamb. In the middle of its street and on either side of the river was a tree of life, bearing twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were the healing of nations, and we need that desperately. Thank <laughs> you.
sorry, I got a tickle. Verse 12, behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to render to every man according to what he has done. Blessed are those who wash their robes, and that they may have the right of the tree of life, and may enter in to the gates of the city. Do you want to enter that gate of the city? How do you do? You know, you see pictures of the streets of pure gold. I want to walk on that. I want to touch it. He that testifies of these things, yes, I am coming quickly. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Shall we pray? Father God, I just want to thank you and praise you. I ask that they'll be with each one as they leave here today, that your presence will be with them, that they will take your word and eat it, to chew it, to be a testimony to those that are around them. Help us not to be afraid to speak out, but when we speak, let it be of love, because you loved us more than we know. Be with us now. Be with us. We partake of the, the food. We ask that I'll be with the visitors, that they all may stay there, Lord, that we may be acquainted with them and let them know that this is a loving church and we care for them. We thank you. We praise you. Lord, please come soon. End it all. In Jesus' name, amen. And don't let me forget my picture when I go home today. Closing him is shelter in the time of storm, number 528. First and last verses only. Let's have a word of prayer. Loving Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your spirit to be in our midst. We thank you for your son, a shelter in the time of storm, our rock. In Jesus' name, amen.